What's up guys, Tugi here, back again. And after the conclusion of Season 7, where we won our second Stanley Cup in three years, and our second Cup of the series, we move forward into the offseason as we have to prep for Season 8. Now in this episode, it will, of course, be the draft. Next episode will be the rest of the offseason. And I am more nervous about the rest of the offseason. We have some pretty big contracts coming up. Now, we do have a decent amount of cap space at the moment, but, yeah, I'll get you I'll get you a look at some of these names that need to be re-signed. Stenlum won't be too expensive. Girardi, hopefully, won't be too expensive. Ralph Jarrett needs a new deal, and he might be looking to get paid, especially since he is now a fourth line, or not a fourth line, a uh, top four defenseman. Abramoff needs a new deal. He won't be too expensive. But then we get to the first really big contract. That will be Patrick Laine. And then Puglia Yarby needs a new contract. Uh, and that's it, actually. Thankfully, that's it. But yeah, we have three guys who are going to be looking to get absolutely paid. So it's weird. I, I do want to know from you guys, what direction do we take? I've had some people already say, go for another cup. I've had some, uh, I've had some other people already say, Maybe blow it up and uh, kind of hit the reset button and see if you can get back and have more success in the last three seasons. So let me know, because if we were to hit that reset button, maybe we would trade Line A back to Winnipeg, Puglia Yarvi back to Edmonton. And if we really wanted to blow it up, Jesus, we could trade uh, Chitrin away, Kachuk. I mean, I'd probably keep Jaspers and Nolan Patrick just because it's not like we... Uh, it's not like we robbed any team of them. I don't know. I'm just thinking because it's weird um, that we do we do have options on how we want to approach the rest of this series. And of course, I want to take it in a direction that would be uh, most enjoyable. That would be the most enjoyable for the majority of you guys that watch these videos every day. Which is crazy because the average number of people who watch these who have been watching this series continues to kind of go up, at least compared to prior series, which is progression and what you would actually hope for. So that's pretty damn cool. But, yeah, let's move forward. I don't know what to do in this draft. I don't remember how many draft picks I have. There is the result of the lottery, though. Arizona, with the number one overall pick, we get a bit more money from an owner goal, which is nice because we need all the money we can get. Uh, as you can see, we upgrade and maintain, or now you can't, but we are upgrading those club seats. We should be able to do it two times, so that's good, and we'll get that closer to five stars. But let's take a look at the retired players. Again, we don't lose anybody. The perks of having a pretty damn young team. Alex Ovechkin retires. Oh, I'm sorry, Alex. I am. Um, I'm sorry you had to go out and lose us. Some pretty big names. Louis Erickson finished as a... Free agent Lucic stayed on Edmonton. He was still at 85 at 35 years old. He was on Edmonton for the entire series. Brent Burns goes down. Some of the player regression, though, is weird. It's weird to see Burns and Bergeron fall to 75s. And essentially, I mean, with Bergeron, he also would have finished his career on the free agent list. It's, although it's weird. He didn't retire, I guess. He didn't retire, so we are going to have to cut him. Are there any big-name goaltenders that have left the league? Oh, Schneider, Rask, no disrespect to Steve Mason, but I don't know if he's a big-name goaltender. Ben Bishop, and yeah, Eddie Lack retired. Why would Eddie Lack not be, uh... oh, yeah, no shit, because it's sorted by goalies. I'm an idiot. See you later, Eddie. We actually did have a retired player. We need to edit that trading block and just make sure that no players are there. And then we will get into this draft. Like I said, I could check right now, but fuck it. We'll leave it as a surprise until we are actually in the draft to see how many picks we have. It's not many. Like, I burned a lot of picks in the last offseason, making as many moves as we could. Of course, we traded up a lot to get three first overall picks. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it'll be as crazy as a as a draft this year, or as crazy of a draft this year. But we will find out for the first time, I think, in this series. I'm entering a draft with no solid set game plan on what I want to do 
You know, we're not in desperate need of trading anybody at the moment. At least it doesn't feel like that. And, yeah, let's take a look. Ritu is up to a 74, and he has a hell of a lot of value. Goddamn. Uh, draft picks. Let's let's see here. How many do we have? Oh, we, oh Jesus. Well, okay, so we have a first-round pick. We have six second-round picks and a third-round pick. And that is it. So we could definitely trade up into the first round at least once. Maybe even twice. Maybe even twice. And you know what? I mean, we might as well. We might as well just go for higher value prospects. Uh, Washington. Washington. How uh, can we make a trade work for Washington's first round pick? Or is that too high up? It's probably going to be too high up, but we could check. How about Minnesota second and our second for your first? No. Uh, you know, okay, you know, screw it. We'll go a little bit higher. Let's go Minnesota and Arizona's second round picks for yours. And that works. You know what? I'm okay with that. Obviously, Arizona has a high second round pick. But we just traded for the 15th overall pick, which is not too bad. So now we have two uh, first round picks, four second round picks. We might as well try to see if, see if we can trade up again. Why the hell not? Definitely won't be as high of a pick, but let's go 20th to Pittsburgh. Not that I want to trade within the division. That's just how the numbers are working out. So let's see what we can do with Pittsburgh here. We'll put on Buffalo second and our second. Toronto's a little bit more valuable. That won't go through. There is a move that I want to make. It's a move I think is... a. Uh, Kind of appropriate. I mean, we tested it out. Let's see if I can tack on Steve, uh, Seth Moses, not Steve Moses. I know the Moses and Jesus combination won't happen if this goes through. It didn't go through, but I'm still going to try to get rid of him. Uh, it won't be for Pittsburgh's second, though. I don't want to give up three second-round picks in a single trade. So let's remember Dallas, Calgary, and Colorado. Let's try for the 23rd overall pick. That currently belongs to Dallas and will hopefully belong to us here. And they do want Moses, which will help. Oh, let's see here. Second round picks. They don't want an improvement. How about Buffalo and our second round pick? They would have more than 45 skaters, so let's just try the picks. And that went through. So we'll probably trade Moses later on. But things are looking good. For us now, so we have three first round picks. Excuse me, a little bit sick again, man. This change in weather, it's getting colder, and it is just beating the ever loving shit out of me. <clears throat> but yeah, so we have three first round picks, two second round picks, which I could probably even no, I can't actually, per the rules, I can't. So we got Toronto second, Vancouver second, and Vancouver's third. Only five picks in this draft. If we had to trade for anybody, now would be a great time to do it, to use, you know, Washington's pick. But we don't have to trade for anybody, so let's make these five picks, and that will be the episode here. <clears throat> Again, excuse me for that, but no jump cuts necessary here in this one. We will just keep this straight through. So an elite grinder goes first, a bunch of elite guys. It dropped off heavily from there, though. Three. That makes me feel better about Trent Niedermeyer last year. High top six for all of them. Montreal gets an elite sniper, then it really picks back up. So I don't know what to expect. We have seen a ton of different potentials already. So we could hit the jackpot here, or we could just absolutely screw it up. So we have someone with high 70 potential, high top nine, high bottom six, high top nine, but then an exact top four defenseman, Colton Ripon. Colton Ripon. Okay. So, he's 19. All right. So, it's either him or Bits, maybe even Chara. So, Barry Bits, who is more than likely going to be a good overall because he's 20. He's an overager. And then you have Miroslav Chara, 19, 6'2", 199. Oh, do we go? Fuck. This is a this is a tough pick. 
This is a tough pack. Chara, Bits, or Ripen? Let's go... Do we go with Ripen? You know what? I'll, I'll trust it. Exact top four. He shouldn't be lower than that. So that makes it a pretty damn good pick. He's medium top four. You know what? I'm okay with that. It's better than the previous pick that we saw Philly have. We'll just have to see who we missed out on. So let's see here. Hanson was medium top nine. Vaborny was medium top six. We didn't get to scout him too much, clearly. We'll see medium top six. All right, so that's kind of the equivalent. Curry top six. Pitton top six. Bits was top six. Kondratia was top four. Okay, and uh, that means Chara is still on the board. And he will be our next pick. It scares me that some teams passed over him. But we will take him. Miroslav Chara is medium top six. All right, well, that's fucking perfect. That's best case scenario right there. We got a medium top six forward and a uh, top four defenseman, medium top four defenseman. And we still have one more pick. Now, the top six uh, potentials are still rolling in, which means we'll probably screw this up. This is the third time? Third time, I think. Or is it? No, because that one guy I'm thinking of was a second-round pick. I think this is only the second time we've had three first-round picks. Um, and, I mean, we didn't really screw it up too much. We actually had Trent Niedermeyer, and that's weird that there's another T. Niedermeyer in the draft. So we have Ronick who is uh, exact 7th, Lawrence Roenick. Or we have Michelle Lamoureux. I think I pronounced that correct. Lamoureux? It's probably Lamoureux. God, those French names. But we're going to take him. I mean, he's definitely the highest scouted guy. How old was he again? He's 20, so he should be a decent overall. Michelle Lamoureux, or Lamoureux, fuck me. God damn it, I'm so sick. This is brutal. We're taking him, and we will hope that he is good, and he is. So that is a damn fine first round to trade up and get those extra two first round picks and get a medium top four and two medium top six forwards. That is very good. Very good. We hit on every single pick, and I am more than happy with that. And Lamoreau should hopefully... Make our lineup now, as you saw, 22nd overall in the second round. We have to wait a while in between picks. But, yeah, just more top six. Like, we just could not go wrong, regardless of who we picked. Unless we picked Ronick. That would have been that would have been pretty shit. But, oh, oh, my God, man. This is another very solid draft. It's starting to dip off a little bit here. But, still, there was a lot. And another top six. For the Penguins, a lot of top six players. Let's see, in the second round here, we don't have anybody that we uh, apparently scouted, which is bullshit, because I, that, I mean, see, that's what I'm talking about with scouting, and a lot of people still wonder why I do that. I scouted the WHL on a couple occasions, and apparently we just never saw this guy, which is impossible when there's like 30 players, but let's see. Who do we have here? You know what? I'm just going to sort by potential. And it looks like bottom six is the highest. So we are going to have to go with Hannon or McGratton. So we have Joey Hannon, 19. And we have Bobby McGratton, also 19. Boy, he... I think that's Polish. That's a hell of a Polish name, isn't it? Bobby McGratton. Get on that EA. It's a simple fix. But do we go with Hannon? Joey Hannon, who is a sniper. He's not a center, though. McGratton is. Bobby McGratton. And I think it... Who do we go with? I'm going to go with McGratton. Because if he turns out to be a good center, that's a plus. And really, the, more, the better centers you have, obviously... Like, Hannon would be nice, and he might end up being a better player. If McGratton ends up being half-decent and being a decent center, he could slot in on that fourth line. And we are going to have to see if we made the right pick. Thorne, low top six. Tanaka, medium top nine. Muller, medium top nine. Better yet, we are going to get to pick both of them. So that worked out pretty well. So Joey Hannon, come on down. And they were both low top nine to begin with. You know what? Still, for second-round picks... 
That's not terrible, and I'm not terribly disappointed in those picks. This has been a very good draft for us so far, and we will make our last pick in the third round, the 22nd pick of the third round. And again, I will just sort by this here. So we are in the third round. So we have Bob Koff, third to fourth, projected. We have some goalies that are projected to be backups. Like, we need prospect goalies, but there just haven't been any worth taking that we've at least had scouted out. And, yeah, that I mean, the highest is projected to go fourth round. So, I don't know. We could take him. We could go with uh, but Bob Koff is uh, Burroughs. I don't want to draft somebody named Burroughs, really. And, yes, it's because I'm that fickle, and Alex Burroughs is a dirty, dirty SOB. Ah, uh, so Burroughs, Bob Koff, or do we take a goalie? Sharkoff. Boris Sharkoff. He is fucking small, too, man. 5'11". Uh, I can't take him. I can't take him. He is an undersized goalie. There's no doubt about that. So it's Maxime Bobkoff, who will probably end up being top six at 20 years old. Or Jean Burroughs. Jean Burroughs or Bobkoff. And I'm... I'll go with Bobkoff. And hopefully he's better than high 7th D. And he's low top 6. So he wasn't much better. But that does conclude the draft for us. I want to go and look at certain values here. Certain overall, certain potentials and get a quick look. At these players so let's see we have ripen who is a 71 at 19 years old that's not too bad he wasn't CHL was he I already forgot if he was CHL or not he is Canadian so he might not be able to play in Cleveland next year but that's not a terrible pick Bob Koff is a 68 at 20 years old so that's a little bit disappointing that does it for that right wings was there anybody no left wings Maxime Chara ends up being a 69 at 19 years old. Not terrible. Hannon also a 69 at 19 years old. Then for centers, Lamoureux is a 79 at 20 years old. Very nice. McGratton's a 64. And those were our five picks. So not terrible. We had quite a few prospects, or you know, kind of like prospect picks, so to speak. Lamoureux is the only guy who is going to really be able to contend to get into the NHL lineup. He is for sure a lock to make it on to Cleveland next year. So overall, I am more than content with that draft, especially having traded up. I mean, it looks like it might have been worth, you know, maybe keeping those second round picks to get a little bit more depth, but to get the three picks we did in the first round is a very good bit of business. On our part, but now we have to look forward to the next episode where we have some more business to take care of with the likes of, as you guys have seen, Patrick Line needing a new contract, Pugliarby needing a new contract. The benefit, though, is that they are restricted free agents. So I'm still kind of. In the middle. Not really sure what we should do. We have $10 million to spend. We'll have even more. I am quite sure once we start cutting contracts. But let me know for sure. What do we do? And actually, is there anybody else? I knew there were other people in the system. God damn it. Tambellini, Donovan, Peters. Lutzer. Oh, fuck. All right. Lutzer also needs a new deal, as does Lowry. Okay. Well, our situation just got even worse. We do have uh, projected $35 million in cap space, but Lutzer needs a new deal. Puliyarvi needs a new deal. Girardi, Stenland, Line, Jarrett, we have some business to take care of in the next episode. Let me know, though. Do we just go business as usual and try to sign all of these players, or do we just make the absolutely insane move of trying to sign... Actually, then again, if we try to sign these players and then trade them away... You know what, guys? Fuck it. Put my foot down. I think we will just go business as usual and try to win another cup. 
the rosters are very close to being done. I'm not going to put a date on it, but I am hoping that by the start of next week that we will be good to go. So I think we'll just carry along. It'll be business as usual with this series. And if we, dare I say, win the cup next year, maybe we'll end the series a little bit early. So I think in the next episode, it will be business as usual, and we will try to sign as many of the, our, as many of the and as many of our big-name free agents in that episode. Until then, guys, I hope you did enjoy this one. Again, I am sorry for being just sick as hell, but like I said, the weather changing, oh, it's just beating the shit out of me. But as always, if you did enjoy this episode, of course, make sure to support my channel in any way you deem necessary. And I will see you guys, as I try to avoid a voice crack, I will see you guys in the next one.